Hi, we're here today. We're going to have a discussion with Dr. Salima Megani, uh, an expert on pain. Thank you for joining us today. And we've talked some about how pain is a unique experience and it's different from one individual to the next. So today we're going to um, learn more about why that is. And I know we all have some questions, but I think I'll just get it started by asking you to explain, please, uh, how it social, cultural, or psychological factors can influence pain? Sure. <clears throat> so first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I think the question requires digging just a little into the history of pain. So up until 19th century, we dichotomized pain as a somatogenic experience and a psychogenic experience. Uh, we thought of pain as a linear sensory experience. So if Megan and I would be given the same type and intensity of painful stimuli, we both ought to experience the same levels of pain. And any difference that would occur would occur because the pain would be in our heads. Um, so this conceptualization of pain was challenged in 20th century um, uh, with the theory mainly by Melzig and Wall, the gate control theory of pain, the International Association for the Study of Pain. Um, in mid-1970s, they, they came out with a new definition of pain, um, explaining pain as both a sensory and an emotional experience. So when you talk about um, an individual's biology, individual psychology, or sociology, I would like to think of them as lenses, each of them being lenses through which the pain experience is filtered. Any? Great. Any other questions? Or? Um, how do social factors influence the pain experience? Sure. Um, so I think of social factors as the social or ecological factors like environmental factors that affect pain outcomes. Um, the examples of social factors would include an, in, an individual's income, education, um, where does this person live, the geographical area, um, what type of work does this person do. So all of these factors would, would affect pain outcomes. Uh, one study uh, by Dr. Russ Portnoy and his group, he conducted a nationally representative survey in the U.S. population to understand factors related to um, uh, disabling pain outcomes. And he found that individuals with uh, low-income individuals, like those earning $25,000 or less, were three times more likely to experience disabling pain when compared to individuals with high income. He operationalized it as individuals earning more than $75,000 a year. Um, so all these factors broadly operationalized as socioeconomic realities of an individual affect pain outcomes. Can you explain a little more why you think income would affect how severe somebody's pain is? Sure, it's a very good question. So low-income individuals have differential opportunities in the social sec sector as compared to high-income individuals. So low-income individuals would be less likely to have healthcare access to begin with. They would be less likely to have continuity of care um, they, would be, they would be working in, um, in job settings where they would have to do more manual labor types of work. So all of these factors culminate into the product, which is a pain outcome. Okay. What would be some ways that pain might vary across cultures? All right. This is a very, very good question, extremely important question. So I, I'll start by defining what culture is. So culture is transmission of a set of beliefs or expectations by group membership. So three important points about culture. First of all, it is the most misunderstood area in terms of its influence on pain outcomes. Uh, people tend to generalize uh, the effect of culture on pain outcomes. Um, so for instance, Everybody, you know, pertaining in a certain, um, say, ethnic group would have um, X type of pain expectations or belief structures. Uh, so that, that is absolutely um, not how one should approach 
pain because there is vast heterogeneity even within cultures in terms of how pain is experienced because even culture is transmitted or filtered through an individual's lens, individual's past experiences, their personal histories, you know. Um, so, so that was my second point. The first point being that there are dangerous generalizations on cultural, cu cultural's influence on pain outcomes. Second being there are vast heterogeneity in, in pain outcomes even within, or expectations even within a culture. And third, and often ignored point, is that social factors often shape cultural belief structures. So it could be cyclical. Uh, one example I'll give you from my own research, that African Americans um, often believe that their pain complaints are not uh, believed by healthcare providers, or they are stereotyped in the healthcare system. So um, they tend to be stoic, and there are studies, uh, many studies that have documented that African American patients, and my research pertain to cancer patients and other uh, studies being conducted with cancer patients, um, that African Americans are more, more stoic in terms of seeking pain treatment. Uh, one study is done by Dr. Karen Anderson from MD Anderson Cancer Center, and she said that African American patients would wait until their pain is 10 out of 10 before they would approach healthcare providers in terms of asking for help. So even though somebody could come out with saying, oh, African, and there are studies, actually you can find them, with those say African Americans, as if you know African Americans or any other ethnic group is being born with these set of beliefs. But beliefs are also social constructions; they are socially made. Can you um, just clarify the term heterogeneity? Because I'm not sure we all know what that means, and you used it in regards to the second point that you made. Sure. So I said there is vast heterogeneity in within a culture in terms of belief structures. And what I mean by that is that there is belief structures maybe on an entire continuum. So people may, within a set, within a culture, people may hold different belief structures. So even though you may, may do a study and you may come out and say that X group uh, is more stoic, um, or, or believes in toughing pain out. Um, but you're talking about on average um, findings, on average. But human beings are not uh, what is called measures of central tendency, like mean, median, and modes. So human beings, when you're dealing with personal experiences, you, uh, one has to realize that patients may vary an entire range within that culture in terms of, of their belief structures. Thank you. So how does um, treatment of pain or lack of treatment affect someone's future or subsequent pain experiences? It's a very good question. Um, so we know of acute pain as adaptive or serving some uh, purpose, which is to get us away from a, a harmful or potentially disruptive stimulus. Um, untreated acute pain may become pathological. So chronic pain does not serve any adaptive function, but it um, uh, puts a demand on your psychological reserves, on your social resources, um, and there are documented changes in the central nervous system as a result of chronic pain, uh, uh, which becomes pathological. Now, unfortunately, certain groups, um, and again, I'm using exa examples from my own research, are disproportionately more likely um, not to get adequate pain relief. My research has been with African Americans with uh, cancer pain, but I conducted a meta-analysis synthesizing 20 years of existing data on pain treatment outcomes. And I found that African Americans, regardless of the pain treatment setting, um, are less likely to receive, and these differences were both statistically significant and clinically significant, are less likely to receive pain medications across treatment settings. Are there any universal truths that hold even regardless of social and cultural factors? I think the, based on our current, current understanding of pain, um, I, I, I would say that nociception would be one universal truth, like there is some transmission you know, along uh, pain pathways. Um, but 
in term, when you take into account the psychological factors or the cultural factors or the social, social factors, I would say that the only homogeneous truth about pain um, experience is that it is heterogeneous. And it should be <laughs> approached um, individually uh, for each patient for the reasons that we discussed uh, briefly before. Does anybody have any other questions before we close up? Great, well, I think this has been really helpful and eye-opening and allowed us to understand better how factors like income or ethnicity might influence somebody's pain experience. So thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you for having me.